Alrighty, so in this video, we're going to take a look at a Hornby R6405 Class 08 shunter. And I'm actually really excited about this because I have a switching slash shunting layout. And uh, ironically, I don't have any shunters and I've been wanting one of these guys for a while. But although they're common across the pond, they are not very common here. You're highly unlikely to see one of these guys uh, in the wild. And so I'm kind of forced to check your the usual auction sites for them and uh, I saw this guy pop up and jumped all over it and uh, the lady sold it to me uh, for 90 bucks and threw a couple wagons in um, which was really nice of her I think she got these from an estate sale so it's my understanding that this is new old stock never run uh, and this guy was manufactured back in 2008 and we all know what happens when you get new stuff off of eBay it's a real 50 50 chance uh, that it's actually gonna run so we're going to gently take this guy out and take a look. So this video is probably going to be a long one. Um, I thought about fast forwarding through some of the boring parts, but I like to keep my videos running long because you never know if, I don't know, maybe somebody runs into this video five years from now and they're trying to do something and my video helps you. Maybe you'll see me undo a screw or there's something inside you hadn't noticed before. I'm not going to fast forward, but I will do my best to mark the timeline below. So if you don't want to listen to me blab the whole time, you can use the timeline to skip to the part that is relevant uh, to your needs. For its age, the detail is uh, the detail is really, really good uh, on here. I'd consider this a, uh, a super detail. I don't know when Horm Hornby stopped calling them super detail, but it's not on the box. But um, this is what I'd expect had I come across a, uh, a super detailed insignia on the box. Really, really nice work. The wheels um, don't have any signs of wear that I can tell at all. Some oil. But that's kind of expected if this thing's been sitting on a shelf. And, you know, that's one of the things that I really hate is... Uh, you know, especially in this hobby where it's kind of niche and I don't think they're moving a ton of inventory. I try my best to order from companies directly because, you know, the second mar hand market, um, while it might get people into the hobby, it really doesn't, uh, it really doesn't help. Uh, it's a little bit of oil there. It really doesn't help them stay in business. Right. But Hornby uh, opened a U.S. website, which I was really excited about. And they, they just never have any stock. Sometimes their pre-sales go out of stock. And uh, like yesterday, I was checking to see if they had anything. They had two products on the website. There's, there was no Scaledale stuff. I, don't, I, I assume they still manufacture that. Um, and so uh, I'm not able to buy anything uh, direct from the manufacturer. And then Bachman Branch Line, I don't, I don't think they've even considered uh, coming over to the, uh, to the States. So I think what I'm going to do here is just take off this um, take off this gear cover, since I expect if this is really has been sitting, which it appears to be the case, uh, there's probably going to be a ton of oil sitting on the bottom of the plate. So we'll get some of that cleaned up. I see some oil on the wheels, and so we'll probably get this guy onto uh, onto a tidy track as well. But I'll see how much I can get off with a little bit of isopropyl um, alcohol. There we go. That's what I suspected. So I'll uh, show this in the video a little bit later, but I, so this particular wheel setup sort of reminds me of some of the steamers that I have, which tells me that this guy is going to be real touchy uh, on the layout, um, which can be great for finding dirty parts of, uh, of your track. But um, some people had made modifications to these to make them all wheel pickup. But when I looked at the uh, sheet for this and I can see down the wheels so you probably can't see it uh, on the camera right now this is uh, this is all wheel pickup there's a pickup on on every single wheel which is great when you got these short wheel bases but I have a feeling this guy's probably going to be the type of loco that needs a uh, a keep alive decoder but I don't really feel out feel like spending out the uh, the extra cash for that at least not right now. We'll see how bad it runs.
<laughs> my uh, my obvious uh, positive attitude. It could run great, but and not to knock Hornby, but when I purchase a Bachman branch line, which seems to have a totally different quality control than the U.S. Bachman stuff, and, and U.S. Bachman stuff's weird. The old stuff is garbage, the Spectrum stuff is excellent, and then their newer stuff is just like 50-50. And I think they're, I don't think they're U.S. owned anymore, I think it's Chinese owned company now, but typically when I get a British Bachman, which is a totally different level of quality, um, if I buy it used, I know there's a 90% chance that if I tear it down, clean it up, throw some of the parts into an ultrasonic cleaner, rebuild it all back up and throw on the layout for an hour, that, that thing's going to last years. And uh, I don't know why, but they just, you know, they're, they're just kind of like Toyota trucks, at, at least in my experience, and, and they're, they're fine. But Hornby, on the other hand, I've had kind of, it's been a real up and down experience with them because some of their older stuff, like the boxes that used to have super detail on them, which I think was what, pre-2008? Someone can correct me down below uh, if that's not right. But that stuff seems to be fine. The real old Hornby stuff, I mean, you can throw it at a door and it'll still run. But there was like a weird period there, which I think they're starting, you know, starting to change now. But some of their stuff that I would get, I would just spend hours trying to maintenance it, put the wheels back on, you know, bend the pickups. You know, sand them down with some high grit sandpaper so as not to damage it. Get it all cleaned up, put it in the layout, still run like crap. And so, um, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's just part of the company. Maybe there was just, you know, after the, uh, you know, the uh, the crash in 2008, they had to save some money. And uh, so there's, they've just kind of fluctuated through periods. How's their stuff now? I'd like to know if you want to comment below, especially if you're overseas and you have greater access to Hornby than, than I do. I'm curious if uh, their new stuff is uh, top notch. I really wish you'd get more stock on the uh, the US website because I would love, 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 love to have a class 43 HST. Um, I know those are common across the, uh, the pond too, but I cannot find them. Cannot. I've been searching for a year and a half and I cannot find anything on eBay, Hattons. Um, specifically what I'm looking for is, uh, I, I don't like TTS sound, but the, uh, the Hornby class 43 TTS Valenta, I think it is, sounded, sounded pretty good. But I'm looking for either an intercity or inter inner city swallow livery on a class 43 because when I grew up uh, in the UK, that's what I rode on back in the Thatcher years, and uh, and so that's you know it's kind of half steam, half diesel on my layout, but that uh, that sort of um, that golden age, I guess. I mean, maybe it's just nostalgia talking. My family across the pond says it was garbage back then, but. <laughs> But then I get my family across the pond. I think they, uh, I think it's uh, a British pastime to just complain about the rail system. But anyway, yeah. Sorry, going on a tangent here. Um, I'd really love to have a class 43 on the uh, on the layout. So um, I'm just adding a little bit of Labelle 106 to this gear. I cleared cleared most of the the sort of the high viscosity. Uh, oil off the bottom, but I just want to put a little bit of labelle in here in hopes that it works its way up to the worm gear because on this this um, the server sheet, which is really cool that Hornby even keeps keeps these so far back, but um, it shows there's a worm gear that sits. It's kind of hard to explain without showing you, but there's the decoder, then decoder plug, and then you have to unscrew those and then take off sort of a metal housing and underneath there is a worm gear. I'd really rather not do that if at all possible, so I'm thinking the 106 will work its way up there and we won't need to uh, need to do that. And honestly, this thing's looking, in, looking pretty decent. Biggest worry I have is cracked gears because God forbid I have to order from Peter Spares. Um, if you're overseas, be thankful that you have that guy because he charges us 50 bucks. If I need a $5 part, it's going to cost me 50 to 60 US dollars, almost, you know, five to six times the price of the part, or excuse me, 10 to 11 times the price of the part um, to get it shipped over here and something that could be sent in an envelope. I really don't, I don't get what the deal is. I have a feeling they don't like dealing with, uh, with overseas customers, so. Who knows? Maybe I can open up a spare parts store here in the U.S. Any double O guys from the U.S. below? Am I the only one? It feels like it sometimes.
I do like U.S. trains. I just uh, I just don't have the same passion because I didn't grow up with them. So the little world uh, that I create is sort of a 80s to early 90s, roughly. And it's funny because it's my layout's prototypical to nothing. It's got a little bit of Yorkshire, a little bit of you know, a little bit of crew, a little bit of you know, a little bit of east, a little bit of west, a little bit of whatever's in my head that I can remember. Let's pop off these uh, couplers here. I like the newer, smaller uh, couplers, not the ones that are spring loaded because they pain. You got to be careful with them so the springs don't pop out, but. I like that they're harder to see uh, when I'm filming for Instagram. So let's get this guy off here. There we go. So the server sheet didn't really show how to get the shell off. And I see a screw here. And there's, looks like, Hmm. So I can see the line uh, that separates the shell from the base. But what we probably need to be careful of, especially after that, if you guys watched the A4 teardown that I did, I learned quickly that sometimes Hornby connects stuff between the shell and the base. And uh, I don't want to pull this off and rip anything. I don't see anything. Actually, this air hose, is that an air hose? I don't know what it is. This air hose looking thing um, looks like it might be connected to the shell and the base. So, hmm. You know what, I think I remember the guy from Chadwick uh, Railway opened one of these. Let's take this screw out and see if it comes off. If not, then I'm going to cheat, pause the, pause my recording, go watch his video, come back, and then act like I, uh, I knew what I was doing the entire time. And that we're all, I think that's what everyone's doing on YouTube. Got to play the part, right? Okay, I'm actually going to pause this real fast and come back because this is not coming off. So I'm going to take a look at Chadwick. <laughs> I'm going to see what he did and I'll be back. Okay, so his model was a little bit different than mine. Um, but he mentioned, uh, he just so you know, so type in Chadwick uh, into YouTube. He was installing a, uh, a sound decoder and uh, he basically said the outside screws uh, or what needs to come out, but um, it, the bottom looked to be a bit, even though the, the loco was, it was the same class of weight, same color, um, the bottom seemed to be a little bit different. So I'm just going to take these four screws out here and uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Let's see if we can pull it off. So there's four screws here, but I have a feeling it's only the two furthest right screws that need to come out. Because I can kind of see, you probably can't see it on camera, but I can sort of see through the holes. And I think it's the uh, far right. I would have thought there was another screw on the left, but I don't see anything. So let's see if we can, see if we can get this guy off. Can't be any worse than a Bachman class, uh, class 47. And oh, you do have to remove this uh, air piping hose here. Um, mine is, I know that nobody's ever opened the shell because the piping is on good, but. Um, hmm. By the way, if you, I've, all, I've mentioned this a couple of times in my videos, but if you don't have one of these plastic tools, it's absolutely worth the 15 bucks on Amazon. Um, it is the uh, 
made of the finest Chinese you know, materials. But uh, no, in all, ser in all seriousness, um, it'll damage the uh, the opener before it'll damage the typically before it'll damage the uh, the case. And so uh, I never I try to never use like a metal screwdriver, um, whether the models used or not. I really try to take care of all the models that I have. That way, when I grow old and die, my kids get an auction them off again, and some other guy can make a. I don't know, virtual art, virtual reality videos in the future, whatever is out then. You know what? There's screws hidden, hidden underneath these little tanks. I think these things come out. <laughs> well, uh, if I broke it, we're going to have to bring out the... Uh, Plastic glue, the ta Tamaya, the Japanese glue. I've got some excellent glue for fixing models. I can't remember what it's called. It's Japanese glue. It starts with a T, like wicks right in. Now, you know what? I think these will pop right back on. Yep. All right. So that's, if you've somehow made it through the video this far, that's what you need to know. There are two screws hidden under, um, they're probably like uh, air compressors, I think is what these little two guys are supposed to be. And I'm pretty sure once these come out, the shell's going to come right off. You know what? Now that I think about it, the Chadwick guy did say the outer screws. I just didn't see these uh, initially. Let's make sure these little buffers aren't going to come out. I can already feel it's a lot looser than before. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to really get that little this little air hose out because it is attached. I almost feel like these little hoses, like on the A4, where you get that hose that's attached to the uh, the uh, the wheels. It's like Hornby's warranty sticker. <laughs> you know, notice it and whoop, rip it right off. Go. Smooth is carry gold. Yeah, so you can see there. Uh, there are. There's four outer screws. That's all you need to to uh, to remove to get this off. So it looks like there. If you come across this model and you can't find the front two, they're just hidden underneath these air tanks. Or um, actually, no, that doesn't make any sense. I wonder if that's where the steam used to go in. Because this was a, this was steam. Well, no, it's diesel. That doesn't make any sense. What am I talking about? Yeah, I don't know what those are. Someone someone can comment below and tell me what those things are in the front are for. I think they're air canisters or air compressors or something. Let's get some of this uh, oil off here. Now uh, you can see because I'm working on the shell, I did not put any isopropyl alcohol onto the Q-tip, even though uh, now that I'm getting a little handy with an airbrush and I, I may start weathering. Um, I don't typically touch the locos, um, but if I do, you know, if the paint comes off, I guess you can just weather over it. But even still, I try not to use isopropyl on the finish. So we'll put this guy to the side and let's take a look here. So if it was run, and I'm about 98% sure at this point that it's never been run, um, the the DC blanking plate is in there, so we're going to have to take that off. Probably add a little oil in the front here on the engine. I don't doubt that it's probably a little stiff. Let's go ahead and get some of this excess oil that's leaked out. Now again, I know my videos are kind of long, but I, I really don't like to fast forward just in case there's, I don't know, you need to pause the video and look at something in the inside when you're working on yours. I know that I do that from time to time, so. And I just want to clean up some of this grease because 
typically I'll only service my locos about every year or two. It really depends on the loco, but um, you know, if we do a good job now, then uh, hopefully this guy runs okay. I don't know though. Again, I've never had an O. I've never had a shunter. Never had an O8 class, but I have a feeling this guy's got to run like a steamer. I'm really glad that I have powered points because I have a feeling some of this oil off here. I have a feeling if you had uh, had um, or excuse me, powered frogs. If you have uh, plastic frogs, I have a feeling this guy's going to give you some give you some troubles. But we'll see. Maybe not. All right. So there's the uh, DC blanking plate. And uh, don't toss these guys. Um, I keep them in little paper bags and then just kind of mark them. Just in case you ever decide to sell the loco in the future. You never know. There's still DC guys. Uh, plenty of DC guys out there. So I need a uh, six pin decoder. And I think I've got a TCS six pin here laying around. Now if, uh, if you're on a budget, Economy came out with some awesome six pin and 21 big pin decoders that are like 20 buck, 21 bucks I think and TCS decoders are excellent uh, but I usually buy TCS or the new Economy uh, decoders that came out because they have back EMS so like I have an NCE DSS system but I really don't like their uh, decoders since they don't have that back EMS so um, it's a little uh, plug for those guys I'm not sponsored because I probably get a hundred views at best most of the time on these videos but let's go ahead and stick this decoder in. Make sure we get it in the right way. And then we'll be ready to stick this on to Pendulum Station and see if it uh, runs smooth as butter or blows up. Let's hope it doesn't blow up, though. It's already been a long year. Cool. Looks good. All right, let's uh, let's go get this uh, let's go get this guy out onto the uh, onto the track. I'll see you there. Okay, so we are here at the layout. I have programmed it to number three, and we're not getting much of a response. Oh, there we go. It's coming to life there. So I think the issue is, I don't actually think this locomotive, as I've said, uh, has been run before. So let's see if we can get this guy up on the tidy track. Let's see if we can just let it run in a little bit. So I think this is just, it's running a little stiff. It hasn't been run uh, in years. Um, while that's breaking in a little bit, I'm gonna go grab some oil and we'll, um, you know, let's let it run for about five minutes and see what happens. All right, so I went and grabbed the wireless mic. So uh, five minutes actually turned into an hour. I went to make some tea, got a little caught up watching uh, Star Trek, but um, the shunter ran about a good 20, 25 minutes forward, 20, 25 minutes backwards. And then uh, I took a um, microfiber towel with some rubbing alcohol, placed it on the tidy track and let the wheels run to get some of that excess oil that I think had built up um, on the, uh, the wheels. And uh, it is running much, much better. Before, 
I couldn't get the shunter to respond to a speed setting of less than 40, whereas now I can get a response at a speed setting as low as 4, and I run on a speed step of 128, so anything from 4 to 100, and it seems to respond much, much better. You can see already here it's running uh, at pretty low speed. So let's go ahead and get um, this guy back onto the bench. We'll put everything together, put the shell back on, and uh, I'll probably speed up the video at this point since you know how to remove it, and we'll show some footage of uh, the 08 running on the, uh, on the layout. All right, so before we wrap up today, I mentioned earlier in the video that this was an all-wheel pickup um, though I had read online that it was not. And when you first take off the cover, it's not immediately apparent. At least it wasn't for me because I've never actually worked on one of these before. But if you take a flashlight and shine it down the side, you will see that there is, in fact, uh, even when the tight tolerance is, you can kind of see there's a pickup on each one of the wheels. So if you have issues with this guy stuttering on the layout like I did, um, make sure those pickups are touching the wheels, um, you know, that they haven't fallen down or fallen flat uh, from sitting for so long. And in my case, um, make sure your pickups are not covered in grease. This, this was absolutely just, I mean, it looked like somebody just put it in a frying pan. It was covered in grease. So I had to get the grease off the pickups. There's still a little bit more that I have to remove. But just getting most of that off really significantly helped. Uh, with the performance. So um, if you've got it in your budget, it's probably worth getting a Keep Alive decoder for this guy, but um, totally worth it. The build quality seems good. The detail is incredible, I think, for a 2008 model. And uh, this is going to have a permanent home on uh, the Pendulum Station layout uh, for years. And uh, I know the kids are going to be excited to see it running. So um, some final thoughts before we wrap up the video. Um, just make sure you don't forget to take off the, uh, the air hose. I think that's what it was, or the air piping uh, that is uh, connected to the shell. The four outer screws are the only screws. Let's get that out of the way. That need to be removed. And then... Um, just remember two of the screws are hiding underneath those air compressors. I think that's what those are. If not, don't uh, put your pitchforks away. I'm not entirely sure what they are. You can correct me below and you should have a great running loco. So thanks so much for watching. I've got a cool video coming out, hopefully in the next one or two weeks where I show you one of my model railroad layouts. It's behind a 50 inch oil painting and I just don't have the time to edit the video right now, but I think it's kind of cool since I don't know anybody else uh, that has one uh, like I do. So I look forward to showing that to you. And until then, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks so much for watching.